Buckets are central, indeed often essential, to all great works of non-fiction. This is one such bucket, and it's currently engaged in a momentous fight for cleanliness. This time, Alan's rather soiled stern window. You all know by now that Alan's sole insulation weak point is the glazing. Whatever grade of tough and safety glass they are, condensation is rather bad either side of the warmest summer months. I'm plumping for basic secondary glazing, choosing polycarbonate, but first I need to get the glass clean. I soon realise it'll never be perfect. The glass is original, and there are little specks on it that I don't recognise, so I don't accept guilt for. No orange paint, I can assure you. But yes, plenty of imperfections even once the basic grime and old sealant is gone. I tried plastic scrapers, and then very, very carefully with a chisel. I left no additional scratches, and the improvement is stark. But perfection? No. I even found myself battling a mark that turned out to be on the inside. I'm not doing the polish just yet. That will wait until the very last moment. I know that you may well inform me, and we all know that some of you will, incredulously that since some of the outer pane will be sealed, this is pointless. I do not concur. You will see why I want an airtight seal inwards as well as outwards later. After having laboriously marked the glass and the surround, I chose my implement, ArboSeal 1096. It promises a low, flexible modulus, polycarbonate and glass compatibility, minus 50 degree rating and a 25 year UV survival. Well done Arbosil. Once all was well and good, and yes this is a different window pane, I was negligent with continuity when I was filming this over multiple weeks. Complaints and rage of a general nature in the comment section please. As I said, once all is well and good, my attention could turn to the polycarbonate sheets. These were custom cut by the supplier. All five were different shapes and sizes, even the two side windows, oddly. All I needed to do was add a radius to the polygon ones, as apparently they can only do that in factory for square corners. And sorted out any messy edges as I was a cheapo and didn't get the edges polished. Instead, I spent the money on an excellent milk stout, enjoyed on completion of filming my latest epic arguably episode, posted last weekend. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is a brazen advertisement. I'm keeping the protective films on both sides for now, for obvious reasons, and they confirm that the sheet is the proper UV rated grade. I then chose to drill a hole in the lower corner. I said in the last video all the YouTube scaremongers made me nervous about drilling polycarb, but it was remarkably undramatic. Gradually sized up, and finally at 13mm diameter. I deburred and countersunk very, very carefully to finish, as I didn't want to further enlarge the hole with the countersink. You've probably all guessed why for the drilling, but I'll keep the mystery going until the end for my less imaginative viewers. Time to install the panel with a very careful bead of Arbosil around the edge. At the very last moment I carefully polish the inner surfaces wet and then dry, to try and minimise the risk of inviting distracting dust bunnies inside. The sealant needed extraordinary skill. Too much and would have overspill. Too little and the seal is incomplete. And I couldn't use masking tape inside, although you'll have enjoyed that. I will own up to this though, even though there's no evidence in footage. On the port side window, I had disaster. A gust of wind caught the panel and thwacked it onto Alan's side, right over Alan's name itself. Smears of sealant everywhere. It skins quickly, so I didn't have time to sit down, weep and start again. I decided to commit to the placement, making sure there was still enough sealant, and then I placed it correctly. There's a couple of smears on the inside of the polycarb. I'll live with it and it's a story Alan can tell his grandchildren. I then had literally seconds to clean up the arbosil that had ended up all over the paint job. Strong solvents dull or eat the orange polyurethane paint, so I went in cautiously with isopropyl alcohol and saved the day. It then rained, but thankfully the sealant had skinned. Day saved, it's now time to admire the better stern one. Not bad, not bad. I'll also share the story with the holes. I have silicon plugs for them, and inside, I'm going to install a set of little packs of moisture-absorbing silica sewn onto a spectra thread, spectra being ultra-strong and unlikely to wick up moisture from the outside and send it inward. Although an inelegant experiment for now, it'll keep the void dry and can be fished out and replaced if need be. I prefer to have long bars or a neater sort of desiccant, and I'm mulling over using helium gas to exclude air in there. Any tips from trusty YouTube specialists? All five windows aren't finished just yet, but I do need to make one other confession first. 
Think yourself over to the bow of Alan, if you will. The front hatch has a small circular window, the only natural light at that end of the boat. I forgot to drill a hole before arbo sealing it on. Yes, I know. It's also the most important hole, as it's right where waves may well crash, so the bung will need a secondary weather protector. I very carefully drilled as before, but no matter how slow and precise, I know some little bits of polycarb would fall inside, to the now perimeter sealed void. This called for outdoor deployment of Henry the Vacuum. The large bit zipped out straight away, and to be honest it would have been perfectly functional left as it is, but I found that with a strange sort of movement and pressure of Henry's nozzle over the exit, I could generate a strange vortex inside, the tiny bits of white plastic orbiting around rather like space debris around a planet. Sooner or later the chaotic orbits brought them to the hull, and the vacuum hoiked them out. I won't pretend that this didn't take a fair amount of time, but hull made, bung in, done. So I persevered with the starboard side window too, making a better job this time and actually trusting myself to get a good bead around the glass without the helping hand of masking tape. The sealant is pretty good to work with, unlike the very spidery, messy ones, so I used a wet fingertip to smooth and gently correct imperfections. I was closing in on the finishing touches, but then the rain came. It did give me a chance with the humidity and temperature gradient inside to outside to compare the windows I completed and those not yet done. Just a pane of glass, streaky and covered in condensation. Secondary glazed, nicely fog-free and beaded water. Encouraging. The next day the rain continued, which given our parchingly dry summer was something more of a surprise than many would predict. The windows I had made a start on all had a good seal, otherwise that would have been a rip out and start again job. The weather at the yard even cleared up, so like a coiled spring armed with a sealant dispenser, I set to work. I'm using a sandable, paintable Bostic sealant this time to go around the raised edge of the polycarb and make a second seal. All cured, but that's not quite it. I could then, note the blue sunny skies once again everyone, carefully chisel away lumpy bits and use a fine emery cloth to rough up the few outer millimetres of the polycarb where it overlaps Alan's fibreglass shell, and then painted. You've seen me paint before so I've cut to completion. Given the very, very slight flex the polycarb will have, Two-pack polyurethane paint is perfect, as it's ever so slightly waxy and flexible, not brittle, so it's unlikely to crack. Now, to get all five to this finished state. I'll not inflict that on you. In the meantime, now is the correct time to investigate Alan's shirts and hats, my books, all of which make your life better, and of course, my other channel, arguably. Bye.